Nalel TV. See it, hear it, and be inspired. Aloha. Um, my name is Andrew Crusoe, and you may have seen me last month. I decided to come back and read a little bit more from my book that just came out, 10,000 Hours in Paradise, Volume 1. It's going to be three volumes. Um, and in case you don't know me, um, I'll tell you a little bit. Basically, uh, I came here in 2013. I knew zero people. But I felt this call, as many people do, I felt this call to come here to uh, what I later learned was the most isolated population center on Earth, the, the Hawaiian Islands in general. And I felt this call and found an opportunity to, to work to raid, which a lot of people do. Um, but I ended up uh, staying here for about a year almost um, exactly 18 months the first time I was here. Anyway, long story short, I got invited to all these crazy, all, I got the chance to do a lot of things that most people don't get to do. I was really, really uh, blessed and lucky to do what I got to do. So, uh, and that includes like, um, like the first night I was here, um, my friend asked me if I wanted to go on a volcano adventure. And I was like, what kind of question is that? Of course I want to go on a volcano adventure. <laughs> um, and I read a bit of that story uh, last time, so you might be able to find that on Naleo's website. I do want to thank Naleo, before I forget, for providing this platform for the people of the Big Island to have their voice heard. It's, uh, it's, it's actually really amazing, and I hope more places have programs like this. So, as I said, this book came out um, very recently on November 2nd. And it's been very well received so far. People say they find it very difficult to put down, compelled to find out what's going to happen next. Garrett Dent. Um, a leisurely and inspiring travelogue while reading it. I felt a new urge to see Hawaii. Um, that's uh, Andrew Durso, uh, biologist, PhD. Left that review. And a lot of people who are right here in Hilo, actually, um, have left very, very positive reviews, like uh, Katarina Zaragoza who you may have met, uh, she has a business downtown, and she said that she learned stuff about her island home that she didn't even know from, from this book. And it's only the first third of the adventure. I sat down, I wrote 750 pages, and I was like, that's too long, and I broke it up, and this is the first part. So I'd like to read you something uh, pretty different than last time, and, and I think it's very thought-provoking. I'll read you about two, about the same amount as last time, two and a half pages. And um, yeah, uh, this is everything in this story, everything in this book is 100% true. I just had to uh, change the names to protect well. Basically, so I didn't have to get a bunch of releases to quote people because I quote people directly. So this is a very, very true story, a very rare glimpse. There aren't very many, I don't think there are any books like this really that show what it's like to come here um, and just dive in to this, this totally different place than anywhere else in the world. Um, so I'm going to read you something starting on page 135. This is uh, right in the middle of chapter 17, Reflections and Fireworks. The following day, I caught a bus from downtown Hilo back to Pahoa. I discovered that it was tricky to hitchhike out of Hilo because one basically had to walk to the edge of the city and it was pretty far before there was a good place for people to pull over. And I should have a side note. Um, I hitchhiked hundreds of times. The first time I was here, I didn't have a car, and, uh, and I was really blown away, especially in Pune, as you probably know. A lot of people hitchhike, and you know, I was, this, was, yeah, this was 2013. This was five years ago, so I was a little, I, uh, I was a little bit younger back then. <laughs> um, as I rode the bus back down, I realized that I dreaded the work shift I had at the community the following day. I felt resistance to dealing with my boss's recurring negativity. The clouds outside were splashed with a mix of vanilla and purple light from the evening sun, and I tried to focus on them instead, taking a few photos with my camera. The feelings rose up within me again. There was no denying it. I was dreading going back. A few minutes later, an older woman with deep lines on her face sat down across from me. She seemed interesting, so I struck up a conversation with her, asking her how she was doing. She was engaging, and it didn't take long before I opened up to her and told her a bit about what I was struggling with. 
refraining from naming my boss, of course. I told her that I felt like no matter what I did, I couldn't earn my boss's respect, and I dreaded working with her again. Once she heard my story, she spoke with conviction. And I love this. this is, she said, definitions are limitations. Do not define how she is. Every definition limits reality, perpetuating the vicious cycle that you're in. I paused, reflecting. So what do you think I should do? Focus on your own work, not her. She's acting in the way that is natural to her. She knows no other way. From everything you've told me, it sounds like she was probably abused when she was younger. I blinked. It made a lot of sense. Everything I read on abuse said that it was cyclical. Children who are abused often become the abusers later on. With this new perspective, I thanked her, and a short time later, she stood up. This is my stop. Good luck, Andrew. Thanks, I smiled back. Remember, definitions are limitations. Focus on what you have to do. I will. As she walked off the bus, I recalled her words again and again. What did I have to do, really? The sequel to my first book, The Truth Beyond the Sky, was the most important thing to me. Everything else felt secondary. When dealing with my boss, Matangi, I would focus on my work, and if she continued to have a negative attitude, then I might have to find a new environment, even if it was less comfortable or provided less flexibility. Either way, I would move forward. If I held a positive attitude, the universe would give me a positive reflection. Something would manifest. I felt that truth deep within me. The following weekend proved to be less stressful than I had anticipated. As usual, I photographed the new developments in the community, cleaned up the kitchen, swept and vacuumed the common area, and continued with my mini website assignments. One of my favorite parts about the weekend was seeing the little pineapples. They planted these little pineapples that Wayne and Anne Marie had planted. They were smaller than baseballs and pretty adorable. Then the cat died. In a reed basket near the kitchen, I found the black cat upside down with its eyes half open, utterly motionless as it exposed a small sore to the open air. For some reason, I felt that Matangi would want document documentation of when the cat died, so I took some photos, approaching it as quietly as I could. It still didn't respond, although it did smell. I sighed at the thought of having to dig a hole for the poor creature, deciding to leave it undisturbed for a while. On our call that day, Matangi and I talked about many things, including what tablet she should get for the community. She wanted the volunteers to be more responsive, and I was happy to help. She never realized that Apple offered refurbished iPads for a significant discount, and that put her in a good mood for the rest of the call. Afterward, I walked back into the kitchen area and almost had a heart attack when I saw the black cat stretch out and walk away as if nothing unusual had ever happened. Don't trust a black cat. That's the end of chapter six. I'm sorry, at the end of chapter 17. So, yeah, thank you for giving me this opportunity to read a bit from my brand new book, 10,000 Hours in Paradise, Volume 1, Arrival. You can find out more information on the internet. It's really easy. Um, it's now available online in ebook and paperback. Just came to uh, the websites in paperback. And if you're interested, you can uh, follow me um, at sign the word hello, Crusoe, C R U S O E. I'm sure you can find me, you can follow me in all the places at Hello Crusoe. And yeah, and I'll probably follow you back too. Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, I, I do want to show you, I didn't know if I showed you this before last week, um, last month. There's a really uh, great, uh, all my books have them, some map of some kind included. And these are all the places featured in this first volume. Um, there's so many stories here that I wish I could share more of, but I'm, uh, I'm out of time for today. But thanks again, and yeah, be safe out there. <laughs> Mahalo Nui.